So the title of this video is a little bit misleading. I do not, in fact, fully understand quantum mechanics. As a wise man once said, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, you don't understand quantum mechanics. And I understand that. However, I do grok one small aspect of the issue a little bit better than I did a few weeks ago. The most recent episode of my podcast, Rationally Speaking, was an interview with physicist Sean Carroll from Caltech, and we were discussing the proposition, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is probably correct. This is a proposition that Sean himself holds and has, has written about on his blog, preposterousuniverse.com. Um, so just a little bit of background, uh, what quantum mechanics shows uh, in an oversimplified nutshell is that there's not any uh, definitive fact of the matter about whether a given particle is here or there, spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. There are just probabilities over those different possible states that the particle could be in. 50% uh, clockwise, 50% counterclockwise. And when we observe the particle, we will see it either spinning clockwise or we will see it spinning counterclockwise. But there's actually just, it's, it's in a superposition of those different possible states. Um, there's different ways to interpret this weird but, uh, but observable fact about the universe. One interpretation is what's sometimes called the classical or the Copenhagen interpretation, um, that, that when we observe the particle, its wave function over those possible states collapses and one of those possibilities becomes reality. Um, so if we observe it spinning clockwise, it is now spinning clockwise. Uh, alternately, there's the many worlds or Everettian interpretation, which says that um, you know, the math of quantum mechanics describes these different possibilities, these different possible states, um, and no one is more real than the others. So you know, when we observe the particle, what actually happens is in one universe, we're observing the particle spinning clockwise because it's spinning clockwise. And in another universe, we're observing the particle spinning counterclockwise because it's spinning counterclockwise. Um, there's not something magical that happens in that moment when we observe the particle that causes uh, it to pick one direction or the other. So uh, what has confused me historically about this, I mean, among other things, is that uh, people who don't subscribe to the many worlds interpretation will often demand uh, some kind of testable, uh, so some kind of evidence uh, from some kind of test to justify holding the many worlds position. Um, and as far as I could tell, that didn't seem to bother the, uh, the advocates of many world, the many worlds interpretation. Uh, and I couldn't quite figure out, uh, is it testable and the critics aren't getting that? Or is it not testable, but that's not a problem for some reason? Uh, why, why or why not? So after talking to Sean, what I think is going on is this. The Many Worlds camp um, and their critics are uh, operating on different default assumptions about uh, different uh, assumptions about what our default interpretation should be. So the critics of Many Worlds are saying, look, uh, we, we have evidence of the universe that we're in um, because we can perceive it. It's clearly real. If you want to claim that there are other universes that exist, then... Uh, that's on you. Like the burden of proof or the burden of evidence is on you um, to, to demonstrate why we should believe that or why we should, should assume that. And you can't, you know, test that. So uh, you don't really have, have any cause to assume it. And by contrast, the many worlders or Everettians are saying, look, the math of quantum mechanics describes these different worlds. Um, and there's nothing in the math suggesting that one of those worlds is more real than the others. So... Basically, if you want to claim that the world that we're in, the world in which we see the, the uh, spin being counterclockwise, say, that that world is somehow more real than the other worlds, then that's on you. The burden of proof or burden of evidence is on you. Um, in fact, someone uh, quipped that uh, the non-many worlds interpretations should be called disappearing worlds interpretations to sort of flip the, uh, the assumption about, about the default. So Sean makes a case in the podcast for why uh, the many worlds interpretation should in fact be the default. It is in fact the most reasonable. Uh, and you can check out more detail about that uh, by listening to or reading the podcast. We have transcripts posted. It's uh, rationallyspeakingpodcast.org um, and it's episode 133. Uh, if you're subscribing to my YouTube channel and you're not listening to my podcast, uh, maybe consider checking it out. I think you'd probably like it. Um, 
And if there are any physicists watching and you think I like massively bungled that explanation, feel free to scream in the comments. But that was uh, that was the takeaway that I came away from my interview with Sean with.